Here we present the polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, supply chain. There is colour coding used throughout this clip. Processes are in turquoise and products in purple. A globe indicates the process occurs overseas and an Australian icon indicates the process can happen domestically. A supply chain is a sequence of processes involved in the production and distribution of products. In a typical supply chain, there are raw materials brought to market by a supplier. These are then made into different end products by manufacturers, such as compounders, converters and fabricators, then distributed to marketplaces where consumers buy them. At the end of their useful life, products may be disposed of, either into landfill or recycled into new products. Products made of PVC begin their journey overseas with the extraction of salt, an abundantly available resource. Using a process called electrolysis, electricity is passed through saltwater solution to produce chlorine and caustic soda in roughly equal parts. Caustic soda is used in a wide range of industrial processes for the food industry, aluminium and textile production, soap and other cleaning agents. Chlorine also has a diverse range of uses, such as disinfection, water purification, pharmaceuticals and polymer production, including of course, PVC. In PVC production, chlorine is reacted with ethylene derived from oil in a ratio of 57 parts chlorine to 43 parts ethylene to create ethylene dichloride. This makes PVC the plastic material with the lowest oil derivative content. Thermal cracking is then used to make a monomer gas called vinyl chloride, or VCM. This undergoes polymerization where neighbouring molecules join together, creating long chain molecules known as PVC. The resin conversion process depends on what the desired end product is, and PVC is highly versatile. It offers the possibility to change its physical properties to suit a myriad of final products. For example, with the addition of additives, PVC can be made flexible, coloured, transparent, scratch resistant and weather resistant. PVC is used widely in products for construction because of its durability, but can also be used in medical devices, food contact packaging, toys, electrical products and clothing. Mixing PVC with these various additives is performed by a compounder. Some converters will do their own compounding with virgin resin to the specific formulation requirement of the end product. Converters process PVC compounds into final products, mostly by extrusion, but also by calendaring, blow moulding, injection moulding, or coating technologies. Fabricators take semi-finished PVC product, such as sheet, coated fabric, or profile, to produce products such as food punnets, stationery, furniture, or windows and doors. Finally, the products make their way to market. Wholesalers and retailers sell these products. Consumers, or end users, buy them and use them. The majority of PVC products are in service for at least 15 years, and in many cases, such as products for construction, up to 100 years. At the end of their useful life, products can be sent to recyclers for reprocessing so that the material can be reintegrated into the supply chain through reuse by converters or compounders. Such inclusion of recyclet into new product reduces the embodied energy in that PVC product. Alternatively, these items can be safely disposed of into landfill. However, that's not the preferred option. The Vinyl Council of Australia runs a product stewardship program that engages stakeholders across the entire value chain of PVC manufacture to reduce their environmental impacts, thereby increasing the sustainability of the PVC industry in Australia. For products made by stakeholders participating in the product stewardship program, look for this logo on the manufacturer or retailer's company website. For further information about the product stewardship program, See the Vinyl Council of Australia website.